pleasant evening to everyone, wherever you may be watching. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimbalo here in Lagos. Let's begin by telling you what the governor of Eboyi State said. Governor Dave Umai is once again called for the establishment of the proposed Southeast Development Commission. Governor Umahi made the submission as he gave his speech at the inauguration of the new executives of the Southeast Traditional Rulers Council held at the Ecumenical Center in Abakaliki, the state capital. Governor Umai believes the commission will give the region uh, a fair share of the development quota. When we shout restructuring as Ndigo, we should rather be talking about having Southeast Economic Commission to develop our abilities, to develop our comparative advantages. We've not had our own share of the national thing. We should have that. It went through the, uh, the immediate past national assembly. We should raise our voices to say, let us bring it back so that when we find what Enugu is good at, Adia is good at, Anambra is good at, Timo is good at, Ebony is good at, you say Ebony has Ebony rights, who oh, we can develop agriculture with who and the cutlasses, who has ever developed. But we've been doing that, selling our lives, shortening our lives to feed the nation. But it's time to do mechanized agriculture. And we need money from federal governments to do this. So when we push restructuring, restructuring, I call for administrative restructuring, where power, you know, is ceded more to the states. But economic restructuring, we should develop the comparative advantage of each state. And at that time, we can now say yes, every state can compete. That's the governor of a point you said seeking the Southeast Economic Commission. But we have some other stories for you on your political roundup. Governor Nasser El Rafai of Kaduna State is blaming the lack of political will for Nigeria's low human capital development. He was speaking at the Council's Human Capital Development Communication Strategy Validation Meeting, which held at the Banquet Hall of the State House, Abuja. We can work on the demand side of human capital development services. We can work on the supply side, but until and unless our political leaders realize the imperative of taking very difficult decisions for today so that generations will benefit will not make any progress. The governor of Katsina State, Aminu Masari, has asked the federal government to take advantage of technology in dealing decisively with the bandits in the ongoing onslaught against banditry. The governor, however, says there are possibilities of collateral damage. He was speaking with the federal government's delegation and leaders in the state. For those that have not started implementing, especially the suspension of GSM services is very important because the informants that invite bandits to kidnap or inform bandits to ambush military or police officers have been cut off and also the demand for ransom normally through the GSM. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Abdul Rashid Bauer, was at the Lagos High Court sitting in Ikeja today for the trial of an oil marketer, Abubakar Ali Peters, for an alleged 761 million naira fuel subsidy. Mr. Bauer is the star witness in the case of Abubakar, who has been tried by the EFCC alongside his company, Nadabo Energy Limited, before Justice Sedotin Ognusoya. But the proceedings cannot go on today owing to the absence of the defense counsel. Justice Gusoya has adjourned the matter till tomorrow, Wednesday, for continuation of trial.
The brand new petroleum industry law has returned to the National Assembly. Well, you might say so fast because one may never have thought that the newly passed uh, PIA will be back for an amendment uh, as it has come uh, before the National Assembly, even before the implementation began. Today, President Muhammad Buhari wrote to the National Assembly seeking amendments to the Petroleum Industry Act. The president is asking for an amendment to the administrative structure of both the commission and authority to make provision for better geographic representation on the board. Take a listen to the, some of the lawmakers, the Senate president, on this matter. If this amendment is approved, it will now increase the number of non-executive members from two to six, that is, one person from each of the six geopolitical zones of the country. The proposed amendment will increase the membership of the board from nine to 13 members, that is representing 44% expansion of the board size. This composition will strengthen the institutions and guarantee national spread and also achieve the expected policy contributions. The Revenue and Fiscal Mobilization Commission have gone a step further to recognize Kogi. They have recognized Anambra. What is left is Enugu State. Because from their letter they have written here by the Department of Petroleum Resources, the OE blocks, the OPL 915 and 916, they are in our area. That's a hint of what happened on the floor of the Senate today when uh, that matter was brought, the letter from the president was read. So let's get to talk about this matter. It's something to chew on. You remember that there's been a lot of conversation around the petroleum industry before it was passed, the intensity at which those conversations uh, came. But what are the issues for conversation tonight, everyone? The issues of balance and fairness that has come to play again. The structural issues are now being identified. But the main purpose of these old laws is to sanitize the industry. The bottom line of our conversation at this moment will be what will the amendment do? What the president is seeking, what will it amount to? Let's get talking, everyone. I have a most robust panel tonight to discuss this matter experience, knowledge, and uh, some of them versatility in what they understand about this whole issue. I have a petroleum economist, Dr. Diron Fawibe. He joins us from Ikoyi area of Lagos, and a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Paul Ananaba. He joins us virtually from Abuja, and Senator Ita Ena is in Abuja studio. He's a former lawmaker and advisor to President Muhammad Buhari. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. Let me begin with you, um, uh, senior advocate. Give us a sense of what you make of what has happened. Um, did you uh, ever thought that the, the, the amendment, there will be an amendment so fast to the PIA, it was just passed, and before we can even think about implementation, we're already th talking about um, amendment. Thank you, my brother, and good evening, Nigerians. Um, and there's nothing uh, extraordinary uh, about uh, amendment of any piece of legislation. Um, my training, I'm a, I'm a draftsman by training, so uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you can only raise issues with uh, the draftsman uh, if you think that uh, the amendment is a, is a bit uh, fast. But the president has a time limit within which to govern and um, and the petroleum industry uh, government BC act is an important legislation. You will recall that it has been uh, on for decades. And I, I thought that at some point, perhaps uh, the president would have looked at, okay, let us at least break the genes and get this legislation uh, uh, become a statute. Uh, uh, a duly passed statute in Nigeria. But then, if the president and his team finds out that there is need to amend, like you will see what was going on at the floor of the Senate, uh, if some states, for example, are now being considered uh, uh, to be oil producing areas, for example, and all that, there's nothing wrong with an amendment. 
I don't think the amendment is so should raise some so much huge eye outcry. Um, yes, one would have expected that the legislation should last for a long time before an amendment. But it is better we amend now than to start start at a very wrong sitting. So I think the president is within his right to suggest or introduce an amendment. It's up to the National Assembly to agree or disagree with him. Interesting. Um, let me ask uh, 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 Dr. Fabi, Dr. Fawibe, um, uh, what is your own take? The same question I asked uh, Mr. Nanaba. Did you think that this will, the amendment to this uh, law will come this fast? Well, uh, the, it, it's, uh, the amendment is a welcome development. Let me say this uh, for good record. Uh, it shows flexibility on the part of the president uh, and demonstrates one simple fact that PIA has not been cast in stone. It shows that there could be amendment you know, to, the, uh, to the act as and when necessary. Uh, that is coming now, we should look at it in sequence. The uh, implementation will have to start in earnest. The president, before he traveled out of the country, uh, directed that the uh, NLPC Limited should be, uh, should be incorporated as a matter of urgency. Now, that will also signal the uh, process of implementation. The regulatory uh, agencies, that is, the National Petroleum uh, Development, uh, the National Petroleum Development Authority, and the uh, the, the downstream and up, the downstream and uh, 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 and uh, midstream commission uh, will have to start work in earnest. The chief executives of these uh, uh, agencies have been appointed, and. If there is some incongruity in the uh, administration of those agencies, obviously there will be a problem. And you know, it's a culture in Nigeria uh, based on distrust of one uh, group, ethnic group, from the other. Now, you, the amendment that the president is seeking uh, in the in the PIA is respect of uh, uh, geographical representation. Instead of having two non-executive members, you know, which obviously will limit the representation of some other geographical zone, the president has taught it in his wisdom that the, uh, the PIA should be amended uh, fast so as to allow other uh, the geographical zones of the country to be represented. So you now have to increase the members of the, uh, of the board the members of the commission or the member of the authority to uh, uh, by additional four instead of uh, uh, the two that were presented and signed into law. So in that case, every geographical zone of the country is represented. This is the way we do our own business here. In other clients, that may not be uh, 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 totally uh, necessary, but uh, I think the president has done the right thing by sending it back to, uh, like we used to say, back to sender, back to National Assembly for that amendment to be done. So I believe that the National Assembly, in its uh, wisdom, will quickly act on it and uh, make the amendment so that the functionality and the operation of the agencies can now start in earnest. There are a few areas that the, the presidency or uh, the president had highlighted for fixing let me uh, show our viewers uh, what these areas are and what the president is asking the national assembly to do um, uh, some section 11 section 34 uh, majorly section 11 and section 34 are the major areas where the president is asking the national assembly to fix so there you have it uh, those are the area uh, first and foremost uh, the representation on the uh, on the board and uh, what the president said is the uh, imbalanced representation of the geopolitical 
uh, zones in the country. Well, let me bring uh, Senator Ita Enang into the conversation. But now give us a sense of the process. Put us through how long this will go. This amendment, how does it go? This is an amendment that is being sought after by the executive to the National Assembly. Uh, how soon can this, uh, this amendment uh, uh, go through? Thank you very much. I want to say that um, I am conscious of the uh, sensitivity of the National Assembly to matters relating to one, executive bills, and two, matters that relate to the economy. Because the functionality and the effectiveness of the Petroleum Industry Act and in, the, in operations will also determine and uh, reflect how much money can come into the economy. Um, so I believe that the National Assembly will give uh, expeditious attention to it as Mr. President has requested. But let me get to one issue which other colleagues have raised and which has um, been the issue uh, uh, on the table. A lot of persons thought that the Mr. President should have returned the bill and the bill as it were and should not have assented to it because there were some impurities or something they did not accept to, I mean, um, uh, agree to. Um, we had that experience in 2018 when there were some things that we considered impurity and Mr. President wrote a letter to the National Assembly requesting that on account of this, it is imprudent to sign the bill into law. Now, what the president did at this time was that although some of these issues were evident, they were, not, they were known, they were there, but it was given the pressure the Nigerian economy had and the effect it was having on, the, on investment decisions by investors, it became necessary for Mr. President to sign this bill on the 16th of um, August 2021 into law. And exactly on the 16th of September, one month later, he authored a letter to the National Assembly, which was read today, the 21st. But if you look at, the letter was written exactly 30 days after signing the bill into law. This shows that whatever the, the contentions, whatever the issues are, we Nigerians should raise it, argue it, draw, I mean, bring up their point of view, and President Muhammad Buhari will give a listening ear and great attention to it. He has given attention to the fact that there were no proper, there were no balanced representation in the bill. I mean, in the act as it were. And he has proposed amendments to this effect. It would have been appropriate for him to uh, send a, a, a back the bill for this to be corrected. But given the 2018 and other experiences, Mr. President said, look, let's draw a, let's draw a closure to this. Any area can be amended later. And this goes to show uh, those who have issues with uh, other areas that even as this bill has now been introduced on the floor of the National Assembly, you can sponsor, members, senators can sponsor their own amendment to areas they don't agree. Members of the House can sponsor their own amendment to areas that they have concerns about, that it can be. It can be taken, debated. If it passes second reading, it will be committed to the same committee that this will be committed to. This amendment now is about the governance. There may be issues that members or senators or the public or some sections of the country may have about the fiscals or may have about the uh, other areas of the bill. They can also, through their members on the floor, introduce it and it could be uh, consolidated and taken together. So Nigerians, President Muhammadu Buhari will always listen and respond to concerns of Nigerians about equality, equity, federal character, and the need to take all parts of the country along. This is why he has said, look, there should, be, there should not just be two executive directors, there should be six, so that it could represent all the uh, uh, geopolitical zones of the country. And one other thing he's done is to say that the, the Ministry of Petroleum is a ministry, and the minister is in charge. The Ministry of Finance is a ministry. And he, is, he has supervisory and uh, uh, just great a role over petroleum and the petroleum. So you don't even need to have a representative of the Minister of Finance, a representative of the uh, Minister of Petroleum, since the minister and ministerial responsibilities covers this, resp this role. And of course, there are, there are roles given in the act to the uh, minister 
and to other officers of the government so they don't need to be in the board. So Mr. President has done the appropriate thing and I'm, conscious, I'm, 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 I'm uh, confident that the National Assembly will give uh, a speedy attention to this. Let me quickly, before I, I get back to uh, Mr. Ananaba and Dr. Fawibe, give us a sense of, because there was a heated conversation around the 3% allocated and uh, a few other issues, uh, the 30% uh, for the oil basing uh, that became a very naughty issue. But can those issues be brought in this aspect of amendment? Can the lawmaker, is it possible? Because this is an executive amendment, isn't it? Now, every bill, the job of a legislator is to propose an amendment to any issue or any law that has been made and or to bring an originating law. There has been very contentious issues about the fiscals, particularly the... Uh, the uh, the matter relating to uh, host communities uh, from 10% or 5% to 3%. And the other one that is hotter, that is hot, hotter and the hottest, is that the, the provision for 30% profit oil, 30% profit gas, will go to the exploration of, of, of frontiers, it's pro, uh, a frontier business exploration is the one that has been that attracted hardest attention. Now, when Mr. President, I, I, I draw the attention of all members, I draw the attention of all members and the listening public to the fact that when you look at, I think, Section 9 of the bill that Mr. President submitted to the National Assembly, Mr. President said that it should be 10% of the rent on mining leases. I repeat again, 10% of the rent on mining leases leases and so on it was not to be on profit of petroleum of the profit of nnpc on gas it was not to be even 10 percent or even one percent of the profit now and the other one that is more uh, concerning to the uh, niger delta and to uh, stakeholders is that when defining the frontier exploration basins you get the Dahomey, which is the southwest part of Ikorodu and all that. You get the uh, Benue Trow, the Sokoto Trow, the Chad Basin, and so on. It does appear to exclude areas like the Cross River Basin, like the other areas where you have cup oil well, capped oil wells, which, are, uh, which ought to be uh, included in the frontier basin development. But it does appear that this is not, this is not uh, included. And again, I am glad that um, as of today, the governor's forum, the governors have raised an issue because if you apply 30% of the profit of NNPC to frontier exploration, now how much of it remains that will go into the federation account? How much of it remains into this, into doing other things? So these are issues which... Um, I right. believe so, and I so know so that up. Yeah, our, our, members, are, yeah. members are concerned, yeah. they may uh, yeah. raise our, uh, amendments on the floor. Quickly, and I wanted to get your, exp I mean, the, the benefit of your experience in the National Assembly, just in 20 or 30 seconds, if you can just give us a straight answer. I was asking that, is it possible in this part of the amendment that the president is asking for, for those lawmakers who felt that it wasn't fair to have had a 3% in the allocation uh, to, uh, to the uh, oil producing uh, communities, is it possible that those kind of amendments be added to what the president is asking for this time? Or it has to come uh, uh, at Mr. another time? Mr. President has not asked Mr. President has not asked for amendment of those sections, but legislators have a right to introduce amendments on their own, by themselves, independently, either as a single person's amend a member's amendment or a group of members' amendment. About 5, 10, 20, 30, can say 30 of us are coming together to sponsor this amendment on this issue. Now, at the, at, at the discretion of the President of the Senate or 
the Speaker of the House of Representatives or the rules and building the way they're doing it, if they are introduced and simultaneously um, um, raised, I mean, kept, kept um, and brought, listed on the other paper for uh, second reading, it can be read a second time at together and then consolidated and transferred to the same committee if the issues are matters that can be dealt with by the same committee or taken together, may even be uh, taken to the committee that uh, we're handling the issue. So it is possible, but this is not what Mr. President has asked for amendment. But members can introduce by themselves the amendment, given the concerns of their areas. And of course, I'm conscious also that because I have a great relationship, given a few things I do with the Governor's Forum, and the, that, that they have concern about it. And if the entire Governor's Forum have concerns about the 30% profit oil profit gas of NNPC, and the Southern Governors Forum met last week, and they're also saying, look, they're thinking about, so I believe that they may take a position which they will or discuss with their members and a coordinated amendment on other areas of concern can be brought so that the implementation right. will, be, will address concerns once and for all, and the uh, purpose, which is investors' confidence, will be addressed corporately. We're due for a break now, but uh, before we go on to that break, let me uh, go to the senior advocate, uh, uh, Mr. Ananaba. Give us a sense of your biggest fear uh, based on what the president has uh, raised and what he's asking the National Assembly to do, legally speaking, of course, in relation to what this law stands for. All right. Um, my biggest fear... Uh, is that um, there, there, there appear to be a psychological uh, cover to this bill or this act. You remember it, the, the act stay for a long time, passed through different uh, uh, sections of the National Assembly uh, up to this current uh, National Assembly before. Um, it, 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 it was passed. And like, I agree exactly what I was saying. Uh, uh, my brother, I think, uh, deepened it. It was important, I can, I can see, for every Nigerian, including the presidency, to ensure that at least their, the, the jinx was broken. At least there is that, uh, this, this uh, piece of legislation. Because it, it got to a point where uh, if you raise the issue of petroleum uh, industry, and anybody, people will just tell you it will never be passed. There, was, there were all kinds of conspiracy theories. Now that the government, uh, the, the, the National Assembly will pass the bill, the president signed it in August and all that. It, many of, as, even before the bill was signed into law, there, both the opposition party and the uh, uh, NGOs were all oh, activists were all over the place crying, criticizing the bill, the version that was signed into law. And I could see that it was it, many had thought that, oh, it was too early to start talking about amendments. But now that the, that the president has uh, uh, introduced an amendment, my, big, my fear is that that amendment may be dogged down by um, all kinds of amendments coming. Because many of the people who thought it was too early may think, we now know that, oh, since the president has said seeking an amendment, we, we can also bring up ours, both members of the National Assembly and even other Nigerians and groups. That's all right. my fear. Okay, so, Mr. Dr. Nanaba, yeah, just for a moment, please hold the thought, just for a moment, because we're due for a break. But when we come back, there's even more uh, worrisome aspects of the legal angle that I'd like you to address for us. And don't forget, Dr. Fawibe will also be talking to us about the profile of those that the president had asked to be members of the board of the NNPC when he's asked that the board be incorporated. So we'll talk more about the decision of the president and what the National Assembly will be undertaking in the coming days. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back.
Just like Dr. Diran Fawibe said earlier, back to sender. That's what it looks like in the destiny of the newly signed into law petroleum industry bill, which the president is asking the National Assembly members to tweak and fix gray areas. Tonight, that takes our attention. Dr. Diran Fawibe, a petroleum economist who's been talking to us from Ikoyi area of Lagos. Dr. Paul Ananaba, senior advocate of Nigeria, virtually joined us from Ikoyi area, uh, area of Lagos also, and uh, Senator Ita Enang in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time. Let me get back to Dr. Ananaba. Uh, uh, you've just raised perhaps your biggest fear, legally speaking. But another area is what we saw also happen today on the floor of uh, the, the Senate when a lawmaker from Enugu State is asking or raised the issue of Kogi State being recognized an oil producing state based on what Ramfak has said. Now, there are several other states, Cross River, uh, they have their own grievance about this matter. Legally speaking, uh, since the PIA was passed, a lawmaker had said on this program that you will see a lot of legal issues come up now, time and time again. Do you see some of these legal issues, states coming up? Because this law is meant to sanitize the industry, and some of these issues will come up. Hello? Yeah, please go ahead, Dr. Nanaba. All right. What I what I'm oh, my response. I didn't get the last part of what. So so what I was saying is that I mean, Kogiste, for example, had been giving uh, an approval uh, to benefit from proceeds say, of. Uh, in a democracy, uh, it's, it's a government. The democ democracy is a government uh, done by the constitution, and the constitution allows uh, a citizen. Uh, a, a member of the National Assembly to propose amendments. That was why I was saying that it was my, my greatest fear was that uh, it, it appears to have opened the, the floodgate for people to know that, okay, you can actually go on for an amendment. Now take the argument of Kogi and Anambra and possibly other states we do not know now. They cannot so they are, they are, they are representatives from their area, senators, those areas, will likely make a case for an amendment to, for them to get uh, what is due to them by constitution. Now, why is it my fear? It is that we may end up spending much of the legislative time uh, talking about amendments of this particular piece of legislation. It may get to a point where we will not know, God be sure which amendment we are talking about because there may be several amendments. But what do I suggest? I suggest that we should be patriotic in seeking amendments. Let's not go for amendments just because we want to prove a point. Since the president's uh, uh, request is on now, I will want the National Assembly to, to do a wholesale look at the amendment in the best interest of this country, having regard to the major aim of this particular uh, piece of legislation. That is what I would prescribe. We shouldn't worry about um, um, the fact that uh, it is early. There is no issue with, the law doesn't prohibit early amendment or late amendment. What law is made for is in the best interest of the society. As we speak, even when a law has been amended, the law is still potent until formally amended. So we have a Petroleum Industry Governance Act in place. We can talk about amendment and we can amend. Thank you.
Let, let me go to Do Dr. Fawibe. Uh, the president has made uh, some appointment of the board when he asked that NMPC should be incorporated. The chairman of the board, as appointed by the president, is Senator Ifai Ararome. And uh, Mr. Mele Kolokiari uh, will be the chief executive officer, and Mr. Ajia will be uh, the chief financial officer. I mean, you are someone who, who, who understand. For several years now, you've... Uh, um, you, you, you fished in that water. What can you tell us about what the president has said, uh, some of the, the decisions that he has made? What are your thoughts on his decisions? Well, thank you very much, uh, Shim. Uh, I wish I, I had the indulgence you know, to, to make a brief comment on some of the things my colleagues have uh, talked about, especially the fears and anxieties about uh, the amendment proposed by the, uh, by the president. You know, like I said earlier, you know, you, you, to make the, um, the, the operation of the PIA, PIA uh, uh, effective, you know, you have to make some of these adjustments. And there is no uh, fear that, you know, uh, we shouldn't have unnecessary anxiety as to uh, the fact that, you know, maybe the amendment will open the floodgate of uh, amendment. Of course, uh, if there are strong advocacy, you know, in the, uh, in the country for uh, certain issues, you know, uh, to be brought, to be amended in the, in the PIA, of course, there, should be, should, there shouldn't be any restriction because this is a democracy and the laws are not the laws of medicine, the patients that are not able. So the, we should uh, just allow the, the amendments you know, that has been proposed to go free. And the president has been smart enough uh, not to uh, send the bill back before making this amendment, sign the bill into law, and then uh, this amendment was quickly brought in so that the, the operation of the, uh, of the PIA could be very effective as released to the agencies. Now, coming to the issue, you, uh, the specific issue you raised about the uh, board, yes, the, the, I've taken the liberty to look at the background of some of the directors you know, uh, proposed uh, for, uh, for the board of uh, MP NMPC Limited. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a, a mix of um, uh, different people from different walks of life, uh, politicians, professionals, uh, uh, technocrats, and so on. And I believe with the, that uh, uh, mix of people, you have the, first of all, let me talk, the chief, the chief executive, uh, who is currently the GMD of NPC. we all know him, and he has been in the public space, you know, for quite uh, some time now, and how he has been driving NMPC admirably, you know, to, uh, to my own mind, because uh, knowing the operation of NMPC and the way he has uh, changed certain uh, 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 methods of operation, uh, some people may have some uh, may, may be a bit uh, uh, not really enthusiastic about the profit that has been declared, you know. But uh, the GMD came in, came out uh, uh, rightly to say that you know there has to be transparency, there has to be accountability, there has to be probity, you know, in managing NPC, and he has uh, uh, made this a mantra or a, a, a philosophy of managing the thing. And we are now seeing the effect. Uh, although I don't believe that NMPC did make profits, you know, uh, for, the, uh, for the earlier 43 years. But it's a different kettle of fish in terms of why the books of NMPC has not been kept in the way that uh, NMPC would declare uh, dividends. So, but that, uh, that is not the, uh, tonight is not the uh, forum for discussing but, but, that. But, but, but I believe the GMD I, I will, who is I, a, I will love, I will love you to, in in few seconds, to touch on that. Uh, for those who have said, okay. oh, it's good that the NMPC had opened up his books and is declaring profit, although declaring profits in the year of the pandemic, when our main steel was affected in terms of um, what we sold and how, how much we sold. And the question of those who are uh, pessimistic or well, who thought that that couldn't have been, that how would you have declared a profit? Even when things were good, you were not able to declare profit. How were you able to declare profit 
in the year uh, of the pandemic, where pandemic was biting so hard. What are your thoughts on those kind of line of thoughts? Uh, th there is absolutely no reason why NIPC could not declare profit, even in this era of pandemic. You know, there are some other countries, uh, there are some other national companies that are actually declaring profit. Take Saudi Aramco. We, are not, we know that uh, we are not uh, Saudis. We are not, uh, NIPC is not Saudi. But when you know some of the uh, things going on surrounding NMPC, you will see that in those years, uh, it's not that they presently they were fiddling with the, uh, with the figures or the books to be able to make it look uh, uh, good and then political correct that uh, NMPC should, be decla uh, should declare a profit. When you see a lot of deductions that have been made, some of the uh, things that NMPC had been made to finance in the past, which ordinarily NMPC should not be involved in. And there is no way the NMPC uh, will prepare its books and declare profit. So, the, 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 I, I, uh, like I said in some comments I made uh, uh, on this issue, I hope some scholars will come out sooner or later, or professionals in the accountancy will go into the operation of NMPC, dig out some of the uh, uh, figures of past operations, and some of the deductions that have been made by the government of, the, of those days will be able to bring out something and write back such figures into the uh, accounts of, uh, into the books of NMPC. You can bet it that you, know, uh, you will see that NMPC had made uh, a profit in some of those years that they are now saying that NMPC did not make uh, a profit. It's not because I, I've worked in NMPC and I've spoken to quite a lot of my colleagues who felt, you know, uh, uh, not that they were, they were offended, but they just felt that, you know, maybe people who are saying NMPC never made profit in 43 years didn't really know what was going on. But the, like I said, you know, the issue is, is an, it's a debatable issue. And then uh, and we, as to the extent that we don't have the figures uh, on our, in our hands, we cannot really be conclusive on this. But let's go to, okay, let's go to the basic issue. So now the, uh, the issue that question. I was asking, yeah. So I was saying because the, uh, some experts have talked about the confidence that the board will bring, uh, the, the Senator Alarumen led board, will be important uh, for the industry to thrive the confidence that it brings on board with him and uh, for those who have also criticized that this is merely a political board just uh, a few other people who are not formally part of the NNPC do you think that this board will bring that kind of uh, confidence for investors no you see I agree with some of the sentiment that have been expressed you know, about uh, uh, whether you know, uh, a board comp uh, composed of many politicians uh, will actually uh, do a good job in... Uh, but, you see, uh, they, they, uh, all those things are, are speculative. We can't run away from the fact that uh, the, the uh, board of uh, an organization that, like NMPC will have some uh, politicians in there, like the chairman of the board himself. You know, uh, that nearly everyone Apart from the GMD and the chief, uh, chief finance officer, you know, virtually all of the uh, other members have political tinge, you know. Uh, they are tainted with uh, politics. And then uh, a, a lot now will depend on their, their conscience. We have lawyers, we have engineers, we have accountants, and so on. They, they are qualified in their own right as professionals. The extent to which they now drive the NMPC Limited to be a showpiece to the world and to Nigeria for, 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 uh, for, for once, we now depend on how they play upon their conscience as Nigerians and how they want to see their countrymen and women, young and old, to see them as uh, uh, being put in charge of a, an, a corporation like, uh, like a company. Now, not a corporation anymore, like a company uh, which uh, uh, should now drive the business to be able to uh, compete with uh, uh, 
uh, compare with their, their counterparts in other parts of the world, and also be placed along the same pedestal with international uh, uh, major oil companies. Like we, we, we can always use uh, Aramco as a reference point. And the, the, what is of interest to Nigeria is the efficiency and the, the uh, accountability and transparency that uh, uh, Nigerians are yearning for. If these uh, 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 board members of NNPC Limited, they are able to achieve this, they will, have re they will write their names in gold you know, for generations you know, yet or born to say, yes, these uh, uh, men and women have uh, done a good service to, 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 to their fatherland by driving this all-important uh, company you know, to, uh, uh, that can, can be proud of. So uh, 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 the political ex aspect you know, of it, if they allow that to override their judgment, of course, you know, uh, that will be their own uh, uh, fit. So I will expect them to use their professional experience. Somebody who has been a vice chairman of, uh, of uh, ExxonMobil uh, 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 in Nigeria, that's uh, in the person of she pass, Akile, Akile Lure, or uh, somebody who has been a, a, a lawyer, who is supposed, a, a seasoned lawyer, you know, or an engineer who is, uh, uh, who is who has experience in various aspects of the oil and gas industry should not allow business as usual and the, they are put in a position uh, of trust and, uh, and they owe it to themselves and to the Nigerian 200 million people in, uh, of Nigeria to be able to prove that yes, they are worthy. Uh, they are worthy both in character and in, uh, and, and in learning, like they used to tell us when we were graduating, these people have been found worthy, both in character and learning. Let them prove to Nigerians that they are worthy in character, in uh, uh, understanding, in professionalism, you know, to be able to drive NNPC Limited uh, to be a showpiece for Nigerians. Let's uh, wrap up the conversation now, and let me go back to Senator Ita Enang. It, it's going to be a true test um, for a, a law that a lot of people have anticipated for several years and for some reasons it has uh, eluded the country but now that we have it and now we're looking at how we can refresh it and fix the gray areas the big question uh, on the minds of uh, a lot, a lot of people is, uh, uh, for those who have criticized, oh, look, NNPC is purely a federal government agency, pre and post the passage of PIA in the way and manner things are going. What kind of confidence uh, do you think that the federal government can give Nigerians to say things will change or this is a regime that will change the way and manner things are being done? I think the greatest confidence that uh, with the federal government has given Nigerians is in the proposal by Mr. President that we should amend the, that we should amend the act immediately after it is uh, a, a assenting to it. And he, in the course of implementation, he found that something uh, uh, is capable of affecting the confidence of Nigerians and, the, and some part of Nigeria, Nigerians are going to feel excluded. And he brought this amendment. But let me say that I will urge the National Assembly to, exclude, to ex expeditiously pass and consider this amendment. Because if they don't cons uh, expeditiously do it timelessly, we are going to have some legal issues. Legal issues in terms of the fact that the persons appointed, the six persons, are perhaps in anticipation that they will, the act will be passed. Because when you look at the act, what the act has provided, means, uh, the, the appointment has um, for now exceeded it, and it is anticipated that they will quickly pass so that these persons can be inaugurated or if inaugurated, their actions will be legal. But again, the, Mr. President has also shown a lot of confidence. I mean, has also earned a lot of confidence. Please let me draw attention because I had said here earlier that as to what Mr. President proposed and what the National Assembly changed to 30% profit oil and profit gas, I want to show what the president, President Muhammad Buhari, proposed to the National Assembly as Frontier Exploration Fund. It is contained in Clause 9, Subsection 4 of the bill, as it were. It says the Frontier Exploration Fund 
shall be 10% of rents on petroleum prospecting license and petroleum mining leases. That's all the Mr. President submitted. And this is a show of confidence of uh, 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 one of the things that should show that the president ha um, has earned the confidence of Nigerians. But when the National Assembly passed it, they passed it to read like this. They shall be maintained for the purpose of this section, a frontier exploration fund, which shall be 30% of NNPC Limited's profit oil and profit gas, as in the production sharing contract, profit sharing and risk service contract. Therefore, any blame or issue arising out of the uh, uh, public disaffection or dissatisfaction on the 30% uh, proposed should not at all be visited on the desk of the executive or Mr. President because it should rather, it is the legislators who among themselves were each, pre were each and all present. Again, so, Senator, in the course of implementation... Uh, because uh, because we Mr. need Pre to... Yeah, because we need to go now. Uh, from your experience as a lawmaker, what is the fastest time for this kind of deal or am amendment to go through? The window, the duration? Well, given, given, given the issues involved and the urgency and the fact that the, 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 the commission has to take off and the fact that Mr. President has nominated persons and the, part, the legality of the nomination of the persons taking office and doing their work depend on the passage of the bill. It is possible for, Mr. Pre for the Senate and the House of Representatives to do first reading, then call on the uh, uh, Minister of Petroleum and the other persons to come and address, I mean to uh, address and to come and brief the uh, Senate leader and the House leader and they will have the input and then do second reading within a week, and after that committed to the committee, the committee will take two days, I mean a week or two, to do public hearing, hear the public, and then take a decision, and then come back and bring a report on, on the floor. But I'm really praying the, uh, all the members that please, give, and although I know you have all the issues, and that you have a right to bring them, if you bring it, please let it not be consolidated with all this, right. so that it does not... Uh, We're totally out of time, Senator. This bill. So from yeah. being passed, so that it, we can have the intention of Mr. President Executive. Uh, Dr. Ananaba, we need to close now. Uh, your final word, maybe in 30 seconds. I want to encourage Nigerians to have hope, trust in God and work hard and monitor um, the proceedings on the, of this amendment and any subsequent amendment and to bring to the fore the best that can happen to us. Talk to your uh, senators, be in touch with your reps, every one of us, to All ensure right. that the best comes out of this PIB, because it is a major plank of what happens to us in this, in this country, considering the kind of economy we run. And right. this particular intention is important. But well, we need to close this hour. We end the show tonight, but I must sincerely thank everyone. Dr. Paul Ananaba, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, who has been talking to us virtually. And uh, Dr. Diron Fawibé, uh, a petroleum economist, thank you so much for your time tonight, Doc. And uh, from Abuja City, Senator Ita Enang, a former lawmaker and advisor to President Muhammad Buhari. Thank you so much, Senator. But as I will draw the curtains of the program tonight, everyone, many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Wakimale. Bye-bye.